ReLU, short for Rectified Linear Unit, is one of the most common activation functions across neural networks. While this video will also brush up on key concepts around neural networks, it expects some prior familiarity with them. The main focus here would be to visualize the effect of ReLU using an example. Let's start by analyzing a single neuron. It receives input from various neurons prior to it, along with a weight w associated with each of these inputs. We also obtain a bias value b, which remains fixed once the model is already trained and is independent of the input. These cumulatively produce the output activation from the neuron, referred as a. Now obtaining the output a is a two-step process. To understand that, we will zoom into the neuron. First, we do a weighted sum of the inputs from the previous neurons and the bias, referred as Z. The formula for Z is shown below. You may note that Z is a simple real number. And to this, we apply the activation function F to produce the final output from the neuron, A. So when we talk about activation functions, it just refers to the second operation, the mapping from Z to A. A key requirement from activation function is that it should be non-linear. Its importance will be illustrated later in the video. An activation function also requires its first derivative to be defined at every point. Back propagation depends upon this property. Let's take a deeper look at ReLU. In its standard form, it mimics the identity function when z is greater than 0 and is 0 when z is negative. This fulfills the criterion for non-linearity. Moving on to the next requirement, we may plot the derivative of ReLU. It is equal to 1 for positive values of z and 0 for negative values of z. Interestingly, the derivative is undefined at z equal to 0. Isn't that a problem? This is handled by fixing the derivative to either 1 or 0 during the training process. And hence we ensure that the first order derivative is defined at every point. The two additional criterions that are sometimes mentioned boundedness and monotonicity. Both of these are not strictly followed, like ReLU itself is not bounded for positive values of Z. And both swish and mish activation functions are exceptions to the case of monotonicity. We'll conclude this section by looking at how the value of ReLU varies for different values of Z. When Z is positive, it passes through unchanged, that is ReLU behaves like a pass-through function. And for negative Z, the output A dies to zero. Also, there are different variants of ReLU. Some of the more popular and distinct ones are listed here. Leaky ReLU. It is a small slope for negative values instead of the value being all zeros as in the case of vanilla ReLU. The negative slope is typically equal to 0.01. .01. Next one is called parameterized ReLU. It's a more generic form of leaky ReLU where the slope for negative Z is a trainable parameter defined by A. ELU. This variation mimics the vanilla ReLU quite closely while also being truly differentiable everywhere. ReLU 6. This one is bounded both for positive and negative values of Z and has slope of 1 in range of 0 to 6. These variations, while being very similar to the vanilla ReLU, have their own set of differences. One key thing about these variations is that they share the same fundamental property. They are linear when z is greater than 0 and either 0 or very small when z is less than 0. So the following visualization should hold true for any variety of ReLU. Now let's formulate a problem to illustrate the importance of non-linearity in activation functions. We'll work with the classic example of attempting to teach the XOR to a neural network. The XOR is 0 when both the inputs x1 and x2 are either 0 or either 1 and equal to 1 when both are different from one another. In the graph, the 0 output is marked as a red cross and the 1 is marked as a blue dot. If we try to search for a line which divides these points in two separate regions, we find it impossible no matter how we orient the line. The reason for this is that the line joining the dots and the crosses intersect each other. You may also imagine that translating the lines in different directions 
somewhat equivalent to applying bias in neural networks doesn't help either next we could try rotation no matter what the rotation the lines still intersect each other another way to transform the points is doing scaling or stretching which could be the same or different in the two axes and even in case of a shear the lines still keep intersecting one another and of course we'd want to try a combination of all these listed methods that is a linear transformation followed by a shift overall known as a fine transform we eventually realize that these set of transformations are limited in the ability to separate out the red cross and the blue dot into two separate regions so we need something more a function f which extends the transformation beyond the abilities of a fine or linear transforms this transformation f falls into the broad category of non-linear transforms and we would use relu to illustrate the same we'll start afresh goal here as before is to segment the red cross and the blue dot into two different sections the starting point is as shown now we first multiply with a weight matrix with all values as 0.5 This transformation is equivalent to collapsing the whole axis on the x equal to y line. We notice that the two blue dots converge into a single point. Are the points still linearly separable? No, because the blue dot directly lies on the line joining the red crosses. Now let's apply some bias to this. We shift in the negative y direction by 0.5 units. You might wonder what is the use of this step since visually this doesn't seem to change things much. The magic actually lies in what this allows us to do in the next step using relu. At this stage, if we apply relu, all negative values of x1 or x2 map to 0. And guess what? Now you may notice that there exists a line in this plane which can linearly separate the red cross and the blue dots. That's the magic that nonlinearity like relu brings to the picture.